Hi, I'm Mark Regera from Microsoft Finance. In previous videos, we have shown you how to use PowerView with SharePoint and create PowerPoint dynamic slides. Today, we're going to show you PowerView in Excel with PowerPivot all in one place uh, in the new version of Excel, Excel 2013. So here we have a PDF with 21 pages of data, which has uh, it's a, a data about car sales by states in the United States. So what we can do here is highlight the columns in the table we want to copy, Control C, and go into Excel, do Control V. And here, the problem is, is that all the data comes into one column, and we want it in three columns. So we're going to use Flash Fill to be able to uh, take care of that. So we copy the rest of the states, uh, and then now we're going to be able to uh, Flash Fill. So here I type Alabama, and then the moment I type the S in Alaska, it recognizes the flash field that I'm looking for the patterns uh, of the states in the first part of the, of the cell. I click Enter, and it automatically fills the rest. Now I'm going to enter the second column, which is the total sales in millions. So here, Alabama has nearly $9 billion in sales in cars. So I type dollar sign, 8924. The moment I type the dollar sign, it automatically recognizes and flash fill. And then the last part is the average uh, sales per dealership. Here, in this case, is a little over 30 million. So it's in thousands. So 30,046. And at the moment I type the dollar sign, it recognized the pattern. So here, I move from one column using flash fill to three columns. I can delete this one. I still have a problem is that this is a text field. I highlight my numbers and simply convert to numbers by clicking on the exclamation point. Now I have uh, data uh, with numbers. So I can click, this is state. I'm going to name the columns. This is the total sales. And this one is average revenue per dealership. We're going to abbreviate dealership. I can highlight the entire table and uh, create actually, convert it to a table. Insert table. My table has headers, yes. And I've created my table. I'm going to give it a name here. I call it sales. So in the interest of time, I copy. I use the exact same process to create four more tables from that PDF that are just on the right of my newly created table. These tables tell me the number of car dealership in that state. So Alabama has 297 car dealerships. Uh, the number of employees selling car, Alabama has around 14,000, which gives them an average of 47 per dealership. The weekly earnings on average of those employees is $870. And in order to be able to join all those states, we created a mapping table with state, which I also uh, group it into different regions. So, I need to add my newly created table to my data model. So I click in a cell in the table, click on Power Pivot, and click Add to Data Model. As you can see, I already created uh, the tables uh, for my data model. So I'm going to join all those tables together through my mapping table that has state and region. I go from state in new car dealership to state uh, mapping table. Weekly earnings sales, and employee. All my tables are joined. This is my data model. Four tables with data joined together through this mapping table. So now that I have my data model, I can create my power of view in Excel. So here I'm going to go to the Insert tab and create Insert Power of View. And it's going to basically give us our sandbox, which has the data on the right, a filter area, and uh, my data on the left. So here I'm going to take out the default view, and I'm going to create a table, uh, a title called Car Sales. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, uh, and probably change the font to something that pops a little bit more, maybe Arial Black. And maybe I'm going to bring the format a bit down. So 
we're going to now bring uh, data by state, and I'm going to bring the total cells uh, of, that, of those different states. Um, and you can see here uh, that it's sorted alphabetically. We're going to convert that to a bar, clustered bars. And we're going to sort them in descending order and make it a little bit bigger and probably reduce the font so we can fit them into one view. We're going to take out the title uh, to have a little bit more space and put our own title. So I probably need to put one more font smaller to make all the states fit in this view. And so we can see, there we go, all the states one below another. And you can see right away that California is the highest revenue with, with 63 billions in car sales, uh, just ahead of Texas. And Alaska is the smallest. So we're going to put a title here. Uh, we can put uh, a text box. And we're going to call this, we're going to put a title across the top. We're going to call this total sales. And the total sales is going to be equal to basically the number of dealership times uh, the revenue per dealership, which we're going to show next to each other, the revenue per dealership. So a fast and easy way to create graph is to leverage the copy and paste. So if I do Control C, Control V, I copy that chart, and all I have to do here is change my variable. So I go in the bottom, instead of putting total sales, I'm going to bring the sum of a new car dealership here. And so, and again, we're going to sort it in descending order, and we see that California is also the state that has the highest number of dealership at over 1,300, um, just ahead of Texas at 1178, uh, where Alaska has a lot less dealership at nearly just 32. So the last piece we wanted to build our equation is the revenue per dealership, control C, control V. Again, we remove the new car dealership from our graph, and we're going to show the revenue per dealership. So here in the sales, I have the field average revenue per dealership, sort it in descending order. And here we see actually that Oklahoma is the state, if you want to open a car dealership, that has the highest revenue per dealership at around uh, 65 million, since this data is in thousands. So we have that information. Now, if you want to know um, what it would be, if you want to work uh, as a car salesperson, if you want to know what's the average weekly earning, we can bring that up. So again, we're going to copy and paste the last chart and simply change the variable uh, from revenue per dealership to uh, weekly earnings. So here, uh, we have obviously the default in, uh, based on the alphabet, but we're going to change it based on uh, the weekly earnings. And we see New Jersey, um, $1,163 per week versus West Virginia at $754. Now, what's great is that this is geographical data, so we can put this in a map by simply clicking on the Map button, and the size of the bubbles are going to be proportionate to, uh, to the size, to the revenue. And so we can make this a little bit smaller, and we can just focus on the states uh, that are not Alaska and Hawaii to be able to zoom in a little bit more. And you can have a good idea of the size of the bubble. You know right away that in, uh, in Montana, you make 787, which is smaller than Nevada, where you made 1,063. So we can zoom in a little bit more and leave that map here. We're going to call this. Uh, Again, copy and paste the title. We're going to make it a bit smaller and call this uh, weekly earnings. Make this a bit smaller and put it right above the map. And then the last thing, we can, we can do just another map and we're going to call this, we're going to see the average employee per dealership. Control V, so we we'll change the title employee per dealership. We're going to abbreviate, 
And again, we highlight the map. We're going to take out the weekly earnings variable and bring in the average employee per dealership. Uh, and we can see that there's a lot more employees um, in, in uh, Arizona at 87 versus Montana at 32. So um, the last thing we can do as well is put some filters. So if we go to state and bring region, um, we can turn that into a slicer. This is going to be very handy. And then, you know, it's always good to see total numbers. So we're going to put total numbers. We're going to see the number of employees in the U.S. working in car dealership. So 933,000. We're going to see uh, the, the total sales, which is, in this case, uh, 609 billion. And then we can see the total number of employees. We have that. I think that's going to be it. Uh, these are the three data points that we can have on top. Um, and you can interact now with this data. So if you want to understand why California has the highest sales, if you click on the bar, everything changes to California. Uh, 95,000 employees usually generate around $63 billion. High number of uh, dealership, 1,300, uh, that generate on, our, on average nearly $49 million in revenue. But the filters allows you to zoom in. So if you go to the East Coast, you're going to see just the East Coast data field. And we can make the map, we can move the map a little bit. You can see that Florida is the state that generates the most sales uh, because it has a high revenue uh, per, per dealer, even though it, has, it doesn't have the most the highest number of dealers. We can go to the Gulf Coast. The maps zoom in, and obviously in Texas, um, in the Gulf Coast, Texas dominates that region with top spot in number of sales, uh, number of dealers, and revenue per dealership. So this part of you allows you to zoom in and out, go down to a state, go back up, and see a whole region if you like to. I hope you were able to see the amazing self-service capability of PowerView, where you can interact with the data in ways you couldn't before. In this case, we use just a few dozen data points. Keep in mind that you can have millions of data points that have been fed through SQL or a Power Pivot. Thank you for watching.